I don't mean to brag, but I killed at pregnancy. She was two weeks overdue. That's how awesome it was in here. I was a genius at delivery. It was like squeezing a watermelon seed through my fingers. And breastfeeding, well, moments after she was born, I latched that kid on and had her nursing like she'd been doing it all her life. Which technically, if you do the math, she actually had been. Clearly, I was headed for a Mother of the Year award. If not that, then at least a sweet runner-up plaque. That is, until her one-week appointment, when the pediatrician discovered she was starving. What was coming out of my nipples was more like puffs of milk-scented air than actual milk. He insisted we switch to formula right away. Whoa, Dr. Cowboy! I know what happens to kids who don't breastfeed. They become drug addicts, serial killers, and socialites. That's hot. But I agreed to use formula at least until she gained enough weight. After that, I was determined to breastfeed for at least a year, which is how I found myself in a windowless strip mall while a grown woman named Fifi milked me. Uh. Fifi, the lactation consultant, grabbed my nipple and jammed it into my baby's mouth. At that moment, the moment of my baby's first real latch, the pain was so intense that I had to stamp my foot on the floor repeatedly just to keep from punching my baby. Truth is, I would not really punch my baby. But I might wait till she's 15 and then give her one retroactively. I'm guessing she'll deserve it by then. Several hundred dollars later, Fifi sent us home with a hospital-grade pump that stretched my nipples through a transparent tube to a length of about 18 inches. It was then that I could see that milk wasn't actually spraying, it was eking out of my nipples like beads of flop sweat. One hour of vacuum strength milking left me with a whopping tablespoon of milk. That's not a lot. Naturally, the baby preferred the free-flowing formula over me. When I offered her my feebly lactating nipple, she would give it a look, then scream at it like an angry rapper yelling into a microphone. That kid knew what she wanted. She couldn't have been clearer if she'd sent me a certified letter and CC'd her lawyer. She can't even read. But I would not go down without a fight. For the next few weeks, my husband would bottle feed the baby while I pumped every three hours for up to an hour at a time. I started taking strange home remedies to promote lactation. So I ate oatmeal in large amounts, I drank beer in small amounts, and I took an herb that made my skin smell like a combination of maple syrup and curry. I went to breastfeeding support groups and listened as other new moms complained. Oh my god, I'm gushing so much, I could feed an army with this. <laughs> But mostly, I pumped. Until my milk began to flow. Well, dribble, actually. But enough so that I could supplement the formula with a tiny thimble full of liquid gold that my husband would then feed her. And we did this for about a half a year. Until we realized that the seven hours a day I was spending with the pump might be better spent with my baby. And that's when we nixed the pump. And the kid became 100% formula fed. And now, she's a very happy, very healthy five-year-old, and I have no regrets about the decision to stop breastfeeding. Though I did have a nightmare that having been robbed of her mother's milk, she grew up to be a high school dropout and dated a guy with a tattoo of a snake on his face, and when he tried to rob a liquor store and shot and killed kindly old Sheriff Jenkins, my dum-dum of a daughter got blamed for it and ended up on death row, or I tried to stay to prison break and then got shot dead in the process. Of course I realized that dream was just an irrational expression of my skewed, unattainable idea of perfect motherhood. Then again, if I do die trying to break my daughter out of prison, that Mother of the Year award is mine.